Alright, so for this next set of videos, we're going to start talking about more advanced topics related to classes and objects. So to give you an example of some of the things we'll be discussing throughout this next set of videos, we're going to go through things like the this reference variable, we'll talk a little bit about the static keyword and how that's applied to both the fields and methods of a class. Uh, we're also going to look at a couple of additional methods that we can use with our classes, things like uh, the toString method, uh, an equals method, a copy method, uh, and then we'll also get into more advanced topics like uh, aggregation. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about generics. Uh, we'll discuss enumerated data types, and then we'll also finish up with briefly discussing the concept of garbage collection and how that works in Java. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of different uh, sort of somewhat disjointed topics that we're going to go through throughout this uh, set of videos. Uh, with the key point being that everything relates back to uh, classes. Okay, so in order to go through all of these uh, concepts, or at least a good majority of these concepts, I'm going to be using the rectangle class that we did back in uh, chapter 6 for the uh, Fundamentals 1 course. Uh, we're going to be using this particular class. We'll create a separate file at some point to be able to use some of these new methods that we're going to be working on. Uh, as well as also being able to uh, kind of rewrite some of the code or redo the implementation of some of this code with the new techniques that we're going to be learning about. So the very first technique that we're going to talk about is going to be what is known as the this keyword or what is also known as the this reference variable. So to give you a brief idea about how this is going to work, we're going to go ahead and create a, an additional program for this. So for this one, since this is going to be slightly more advanced topics, I'll include an extra little portion here, so ADV, which would be short for advanced. So this is going to be our advanced rectangle demo. And if you're going to be making this as a project in an IDE, I would recommend probably you can just go with advanced rectangle demo as the name of the project itself. And you can just use this file plus the rectangle file in that project. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get the class header for this. Then go ahead and make our main method. So our public static void main. And inside of here, I'll go ahead and just briefly create an object and then call a method on that object. So we're going to have our rectangle. We can call it something like rect. This is going to be equal to a new rectangle object. And then whenever I want to call a method on it, I know that I need to specify the name of the object. And then I have that dot notation so that I can then go ahead and say I want to use this particular method on this particular object. So I'd say something like maybe get length. Okay, so just doing this by itself, obviously this isn't really going to do anything, uh, or at least it won't do anything that uh, will be visible to us unless I included this in a print statement or were to assign this to some variable and then use that later. Uh, the primary purpose here is just to be able to show this syntax right here. So we've got our object name, our dot, and then the name of the method that we want to call. And obviously, if we could access the fields from inside of this rectangle demo, that would also work the same way. I can show you another line for that. You'd have something like rect.length. Uh, obviously, we can't do this because we've set our fields to be private. Again, this is just to be able to show the syntax, but we'll go ahead and remove, or at least uh, let's just comment this particular line out. We'll leave it in there. Okay, so this is just a general idea about the syntax for this so that you have a, a pretty good idea as to what I'm about to do with what is known as the this reference variable. So if we come back into the rectangle class itself, so within the scope of the class itself, we can actually make use out of a particular keyword, which is known as just this. So if I add that in front of one of these fields, uh, the syntax highlighter for my text editor will kind of show that there's something unique about it. So the way that this is going to work, uh, essentially, by putting this dot and then the name of a field or a method, uh, this is going to essentially take the place of uh, trying to call this field or this method on a particular object. Okay. So when I say this dot length, what I mean to say is effectively we're going to access the length of this object. And if I do the same thing here, I can say that I want to access the width, again, of this object. So the purpose of using the this keyword is that now, by specifying it like this, 
the length that I'm including right here must be this length field. It can't possibly be any other link length within uh, the scope of this, uh, this constructor that we have here. That's also going to be true right here in this parameterized constructor. So if I do the same thing here, I can say this.length and this.width. Well, now the length that I have right here must be referring to this length field. Whereas if I were to change both of these to just say length and width, and then do the same thing here, now there is a distinction between the length that corresponds to the field and the length that corresponds to the parameter. This is also true for the width. This width now corresponds to the width field and the width on the other side by itself corresponds to the parameter width. So by doing this, I can now use the same variable name for both my fields and my parameters and I don't have to worry about that idea of shadowing. So before, when we were looking at this, we ran into an issue where if we didn't include the this keyword, uh, we saw this a little bit before, uh, what would happen is the only thing that length could, th uh, the, the program could assume length means in this scope right here is this length parameter. It would never see the length field if we did this. But now by including that uh, this keyword, we can go ahead and correct for this. So we can now actually uh, essentially override this idea of shadowing by using the this keyword. Okay. We can also do the same thing for our two setters. So we'll go ahead and change these as well. So we're going to change that new length to just be called length. And we're going to change the what we intend to be the length field to say this.length. Same thing for our set width. Let's change the parameter to just width. And we'll change the part where we're specifying the field to this.width. Okay. For some of these other methods, we don't necessarily have to do this. In some cases, if you prefer, you are certainly welcome to do this. It doesn't have any, uh, there aren't any consequences to doing it this way. If anything, in some cases, when your code gets very large, it's pretty helpful to include the, uh, this keyword in front of specific variables. That way then it very explicitly lets anybody else that sees your program or even allows you to recognize if you're looking over this program later that these variables that you include right here are actually corresponding to the fields and not maybe some other variable. Uh, that's particularly useful whenever you have uh, much larger methods where you've got a combination of both uh, variables that are local to that method as well as fields that you need to kind of use in uh, combination with each other. For much smaller methods like this, where they're a single line, uh, this is not as essential. Okay. Uh, then one other thing that we can also take a look at with our this keyword is the ability to use it uh, to call one constructor method from inside of another constructor method. So the idea here is that in addition to being able to use it in this context, where it's sort of like using it with an object, we can also use it like this. So I'm going to say this, we have a pair of parentheses, and then what I want to do is I want to make this look like the method signature for my parameterized constructor right here. So the way that I can do that is I'm going to use this, and now in the context of using it as a call to a constructor method, we can think of this as basically representing our rectangle class. And then right here, I'm going to specify the two values that I want to use for my length and width. So I'm going to do 1.0 and 1.0. And then I can remove these two lines. And so now what's going to happen is whenever I come over to my demo, I make this call to the NORX constructor. If I come back over to my code here, we're calling the NORX constructor here. But on the very first line of it, so line 8 of this file, we are going to make a call to the parameterized constructor, passing in the values 1 and 1 for the length and width. And then we'll go ahead and assign those two values here. Uh, the other thing to make note of, and there's a reason why I put it in this particular order, if we're going to use this constructor, we have to make sure that it is the first line or the first thing that we do inside of that constructor method. 
Okay, so if I were to swap the ordering of this print statement and our call to uh, this, the using the call for this to the parameters constructor, uh, then that would cause an error. So I've got to make sure that I do it in exactly the order I have it in. Uh, the other thing that we'll take note of though, because of the fact that we're doing it this way, is whenever I make this call right here, if I were to compile and run this program, we're now going to see a call to our parameterized constructor occurring because of what I've put on line eight. So that's going to cause this print statement to print, this is the parameterized constructor to the console. Then when we finish that, we're gonna come back to the noargs constructor and we're also going to print, this is the noargs constructor to the console. So we'll go ahead and compile and run this just to take a quick look at that as well. So we're gonna to need to compile both our rectangle and also our advanced rectangle demo. And then we'll go ahead and run the advanced rectangle demo. And now we can see we get both, this is the parameterized constructor and this is the noarcs constructor. So you see both of those things printing out because of the way that we've set this up so that it ends up having to call both of these constructor methods anytime that we call the noarcs constructor. Okay, uh, for the rest of the videos corresponding to these advanced class topics, I'm gonna go ahead and just comment out these two lines though, since I don't really wanna clutter my console with a bunch of print statements about which constructor I'm accessing. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave those commented out. If you wanna be able to see this for yourself when you're uh, looking over the code for uh, the this keyword, you can go ahead and uncomment these two lines just to be able to get those two print statements to display. Okay, uh, so from here, going into the next video, we're going to take a look at static members. So it's gonna be static fields and static methods.